Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and today we are starting a new journey with a complete setup series on the Ubiquiti UDM Pro or Dream Machine Pro. Now the UDM Pro is one of Ubiquiti's sort of all-in-one devices. The focus for this series is going to be on complete setup of the UDM Pro with a home user environment in mind. Now why a home user environment instead of a business environment? Uh, it's because in my opinion, where the UDM Pro really, really shines is for home users. For a business environment, it has a couple of drawbacks that I personally would prefer other equipment, a little bit more robust equipment, equipment that has a little bit more redundancy built in for a business. For home users though, the UDM Pro is really great. So let's take a quick look at the product page if you're not familiar with this device already. $379 for this device and it becomes your firewall. It can run Unify Protect, it can run all of your access points, your guest networks and IoT networks, stuff that we're gonna set up as part of this series. And it also has Unify Access for access control as well as Unify Talk uh, for a phone system. So I'll put a link to this page down below, but the UDM Pro is one, one of the devices that Unify and Ubiquity are calling their Unify OS consoles, right? So what does that mean exactly? Well, essentially, there are devices out there, such as the UDM Pro, the UDM, uh, the Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus is another example, where they run what's now called the Unify OS as the base operating system in the back end and then on top of that base operating system are separate applications. So for instance, we have Unify Network, which controls your firewalling, your Wi-Fi, uh, your network switches and stuff like that. We've got Unify Protect, which is for cameras, video surveillance, Unify Access and Talk as well. The UDM Pro can have all four of those applications running on Unify OS, whereas something like the non-Pro version, the standard UDM, only has Unify Network running on top of it. So you can see the full comparison online. We're not gonna dig into this too deeply because this video is going to specifically focus on the UDM Pro. Before we dig in though, make sure you're following Crosstalk Solutions on YouTube and give us a like. Both of those things are completely free and it really helps out the channel. Plus you'll be notified when additional videos in this series are released. And you can also follow us on Twitter at CrosstalkSOL to see the stuff that we've got going on on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you just want to buy me a beer, there's a link down below to do that too. Installing a hard drive into the UDM Pro is really straightforward. You simply pop out the drive bay, make sure the power is off when you do this, by the way. And the included drive bay will allow you to install either a two and a half inch or three and a half inch hard drive. Uh, right here I just have this one terabyte Toshiba. I think this originally came out of my Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus. Uh, since I don't use this for a live protect environment, I don't really need a ton of storage. But I would recommend something like a surveillance hard drive, either the Seagate Skyhawk or the Western Digital Purples. They come in all sorts of different flavors, four terabyte, eight terabyte. Really depends on what kind of cameras you're running and what quality you're recording in. Now, if you're interested in an online calculator for figuring out exactly how much drive space you might need in your UDM Pro, uh, I will put a link down in the description to a really nicely done calculator from Zufall Communications, where he allows you to pick your cameras, set your recording quality, and then it will tell you what kind of hard drive is best suited. Once you have your hard drive, you simply install it in this drive bay and slide it right back in. So let's dive in right now. I have the UDM Pro in a factory default state. In a factory default state, the IP address of the UDM Pro is 192.168.1.1. So the first thing that you have to do to set up this device is connect your computer to it and then set up your computer in that same network. So here we can see I've pulled up my network connections. I'm gonna right click on my ethernet connection and I'm gonna choose properties. And I'm gonna double click on IPv4 and we can see that I have manually set up my computer as 192.168.1.2. Now you don't have to use .2. You can use anything from 2 to all the way up to 254. Uh, you just can't use .1 because that is what the UDM Pro is by default. So we're gonna say okay, okay. 
And then you can put 192.168.1.1 in your browser bar, and you should come up to this page right here that says your connection is not private. That's totally okay. We're gonna click advanced and proceed. And here we are getting started with the UDM Pro installation wizard. All right, so they have a message here about how UI is committed to protecting your privacy and security. It says, our goal is to keep as much of your data off cloud. The diagnostics data that we do collect is used to improve performance and stability of the products we deliver to you, keeping your personal information private from everyone, including us. You have the option to opt out of that data from the settings page after setup. So we're gonna say set up UDM Pro. And let's go ahead and give it a name. We're gonna call it UDM Pro Complete Setup because that is the name of this series. We're gonna to agree to the terms and conditions and say next. And then we have a setup type. Now, it allows you to choose personal or business. I've tried both and I don't see any actual difference between these two other than when you choose business, it asks you some additional questions about the type of business and the size of business. Whereas for personal, it does not ask you those questions. I've gone through the complete install using both of these setup types and I did not notice any difference in actually, you know, in Unify OS or in Unify Network or Protect. So if you know of any additional differences, put those down in the comments below, but to me, these are almost exactly the same other than the questions that it asks you if you select business. So we're gonna choose personal and say next. And now it's gonna want us to sign into UI.com. Now this has been a point of contention for the UDM Pro. You are not allowed to have a local login to this device to set it up, right? You have to set it up with a UI.com login. So we're gonna go ahead and log in with our UI.com login. And it's now gonna ask me for my two-factor authentication token, which I highly, highly recommend. Since this is a cloud-only login for the UDM Pro, set up two-factor authentication, either with something like a YubiKey, like I use, or you can use something like Google Authenticator on your smartphone. All right, so you may or may not receive this screen. When the UDM Pro takes backups, those backups are available even after you factory reset the device. So we can see here that I have a couple of backups that I took while I was initially setting up this device in preparation for these videos. I'm not gonna choose either of these backups though. We're just gonna go ahead and say continue without backup. But in most cases, you're actually not gonna see this step, especially if you just purchased your UDM Pro uh, and are setting it up for the first time. Next, it's gonna ask us about our update schedule. How often do we want to update the UDM Pro? For me personally, I do not like automatic updates, so I'm gonna set these to disabled. Your mileage may vary. If you are comfortable with letting the UDM Pro update itself, you can choose if it's daily or weekly and then set a time. All right, next. And here we have configuration, auto-optimize. So I'm gonna leave auto-optimize on, and it says Unify Network automatically detects and sets the most commonly missed but vital settings for improved Wi-Fi and network performance. So we're gonna let this thing be the brains of the operation, and we're gonna say next. Now we are starting an internet speed test. We can see that I'm pushing about 700 megabits per second, which believe me, I'm paying for. And our upload is capping out at about 40 megabits per second. Now you can adjust these results to the speeds that you're actually promised from your ISP or you can just take these defaults. I'm just gonna take the defaults that it uh, detected and say next. And now we have a summary of our setup and we will click finish. Okay, so we can see here that right after I clicked finished, uh, within about 15 seconds or so, I have now started getting pings from the internet, meaning that we are internet connected, so that's good. Uh, however, if you have internet that requires something like a static IP address, you might not yet have internet access. But I'm gonna assume that most home users use DHCP for their internet connection. So at this point in the setup, when you get this, you know, how was your experience, you should now have internet access. So now it's asking us, how would you rate the installation experience of your dream machine? We'll give it five stars and we'll say, OMG, what an amazing setup wizard, submit. We are now at the dashboard of the UDM Pro or at the dashboard of what's called Unify OS. And from here, we can see all of the applications that are installed. By default, we have network installed as well as protect. But if we wanted to set up access or talk, we'd actually have to click these buttons to set those up. 
You can see the versions that I'm working with right now. We are version 6.1.71 on Unify Network, version 1.17.4 on Unify Protect. For the system itself, we are version 1.9.3, and your versions may be different depending on when you're actually going through this setup process. So before we start diving into adding our devices and access points, let's take a look around this interface. So we have the dashboard, we have our applications, we have users where we can add users down here at the bottom. Those users can be used for basically all of these other applications, right? So you can create users that can view cameras in Unify Protect. You can create users that can have a phone in Unify Talk or can have access to a door in Unify Access. All of that is done through the users right here and a user that you create is essentially shared across all of these Unify applications. By the way, a shortcut to all of this stuff is always up here with these nine dots. If you click these nine dots, you can click this UDM Pro Complete to get back to this dashboard. You can choose an individual application and it's all, there's also a shortcut to users and settings. So now let's take a look at the Unify OS settings. And here we can see device name, WAN IP, gateway IP, etc., cetera, et cetera. We can see the performance statistics for our device. We can see the hardware for the device. And then down here we can see the storage and capacity. If we click on updates, it's going to tell us if the UDM Pro or Unify OS needs an update. In my case, mine is completely up to date. But I have a couple of applications that are not up to date. So the first thing that we want to do here is get our applications up to date. So we're gonna choose Unify Network first. We're gonna say update. And now we're up to date. That took about two minutes to run the Unify Network update. Let's now update Unify Protect as well. And Protect is now updated as well. We are on version 1.18.1 as of the release of this video. If you look a little bit further down, these are where you can change your auto update settings. So remember during the wizard, we turned off auto updating but if you ever wanna make changes to those settings, you can do that down here in the auto update section. If we click on location and time, this allows us to set our exact address as well as our time zone. And if we come over here to advanced, we can rename the device, we can turn on SSH, which I actually recommend. There are some instances where you may need to get into the device via SSH. For instance, if an application update crash that application and you want to roll it back to a previous version or something like that it's just always helpful to have ssh access so let's go ahead and turn on ssh access and you want to give it a nice strong password that you're going to remember and click confirm now you can also turn on remote access right so this will allow the device to reach out to unify.ui.com and show up as a device that can be configured through that portal it's a really nice way to be able to configure your home network from anywhere in the world, and you don't need to open up ports through to your UDM Pro to do so. However, keep in mind that you are now connecting out to a cloud-based application, and so if you do not like that you have control of your device through a cloud-based application, you can disable remote access, but I would strongly recommend creating a local administrative user on the UDM Pro first before you do that. Scrolling down a bit, we can restart the device, power it off, do a factory reset, download a support file. That's if you call into support and they ask you to download a support file, that's where you do it right here, or you can restore a backup. And then at the very bottom, we have our backup configuration. This is where we turn on backup of the device. You remember when we went through initial setup wizard, we saw those backups were available even after a factory reset. So this is a really good idea to have these backups turned on. You can run a manual backup by clicking backup button right here, uh, or you can schedule a backup where I've got mine set by default uh, at Monday at 12 a.m. I'm actually gonna change that to Sunday at 12, uh, we'll say 1 a.m. instead and confirm. Okay, let's pop over to our users now. And as I was talking about earlier, so I have one user in here already. I also wanna add a local administrator just in case I ever need it. So we're gonna say add user. For role, we wanna choose super admin and local access only. So we're gonna call this super admin. Uh, the name that I'm gonna give it is Unify Admin, and then I'm gonna give it a nice strong password. 
Employee ID and group settings, that's stuff that we don't need to deal with right now. So we're just gonna add our user and say add. And now we have a new super admin user that we can log into the device locally with. That's gonna do it for this video. In our next video, we're gonna start digging into Unify Network and setting up some devices and going through the initial configuration steps of that application. If you guys have suggestions for what you would like to see me cover as part of this UDM Pro series, make sure you put those suggestions down below. I read every single comment that comes into YouTube. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to like and subscribe, it's absolutely free, and we will see you in the next video.